Are you struggling to play both hands together on the piano? Or are you a teacher looking for tips? Well, one of the biggest challenges for beginner piano players is coordinating both hands. It can feel overwhelming and frustrating. In today's video, I'm going to show you some simple tips to make playing hands together easier using a beautiful piece called The Last Moments. Stay tuned until the end for a special tip that will make a huge difference in your playing. If we haven't met, I'm Rosemary Penner, creative piano teacher and composer at Must Love Music. Now, whether you're a parent eager to inspire your child's music journey, an adult looking to fulfill your own piano dreams, or someone in search of beautiful sheet music, you're in the right place. Let's make music together. Now, before we begin, it's summer here, and we are babysitting Gizmo, a very cute cockatiel who loves to chirp. So if you hear some chirping in the background, if you hear my kids walking around, it is what it is. <laughs> so uh, just try and ignore that. The Last Moments is an elementary level piece with a magical and mysterious mood, and it is perfect for practicing hand coordination. Pretty, right? So the gentle flowing melody re really requires both hands to work together seamlessly, and that's what make the, makes the song work. So while there is a jump in learning between playing something hands separate to hands together, hands separate is a very good place to start. You need to get to the point where you don't have to think about at least one hand. We only have so much brain power, and I often tell my students that when we put things hands together, especially if we don't know it really well hands separate, it can feel like your brain is being pulled, right? Like out like this. First, we need to learn each hand separately. Here is the right hand melody. So let's break this down a little bit. We're in what's called E minor position, meaning that we've got the notes E, F sharp, G, A, B, <laughs> and then B, A, G, F sharp, E. In this piece, we go E and then we skip up. Pause as needed. Then we have the left hand pattern. So what's going on here? Well, our bottom note stays the same and we lift our top note. Then we go back and this time we lower our bottom note half a step. Go ahead and practice this. You can pause this video and try it out on your own. Make sure that you can play each of those hands separate. So step two is hands together rhythm. You may have thought, oh, okay, I know each of the, the melodies, I know the left hand, it's fine. But actually, we wanna focus on rhythm. That's actually the intermediate step or like the in-between step that a lot of people miss. So this is easier to do away from the keys. We can, you can use your knees, or if you put the, this down, the cover down on your piano, you can do that there. And it's so much easier to do the rhythm rather than everything all at once. So try that with me. Notice that the left hand, I'm one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and my right hand has more variation to it. We wanna make sure that we're staying relaxed and you wanna make sure that you're actually square with wherever you're playing. I'm looking at the camera here, so my position is maybe not as healthy as it could be. And some fun ways of doing this include, you could tap this on your shoulders or your knees. So you could go, Um, students like on their head. You could even grab pencils or chopsticks. That's a fun one as well. And the nice part is you can do this if you're in a vehicle 
and you're traveling somewhere, as long as you're not driving, you're good to go. You can actually do this. All right, so step three is hands together playing. You're thinking, my goodness, the title was hands together playing, and we're just getting to it now. If you need to go back to review the hands separate section at any point, go ahead, but you wanna make it very, very manageable. Here's what we can do. Um, I'm gonna play a section and I would like you to copy me. What I demonstrated there was what we call in the studio an add-on strategy. I played one measure, and then I played the next measure with it. And then because oftentimes we learn the beginning of a piece much better than the rest of it, I played the second measure with the third measure. And then I dropped that second measure, went third measure and fourth measure. And you can kind of see how this goes, that you can build out an entire section of a song without taking a lot of time. And then at the end, we played the whole section through to make sure that we understood what was going on. You wanna pay close attention to where your hands come together and practice these spots a little extra if needed. The other spot is in between measures. So if you happen to be reading music, that's the other one that students oftentimes will take a break. What you're trying to create is a beautiful sentence that doesn't have awkward pauses. Step five is hands together with a metronome or backing track. Now, metronomes are fantastic. I grew up using a metronome. In fact, the metronome that I used when I was younger is on the piano there or on the shelf right there, but they do tend to be rather boring. Now we use backing tracks all the time in my studio because they can serve the same purpose. They keep you playing rather than allowing you to stop and start, which is what we often do when we make a mistake. For the purposes of this video, I'm gonna get you to play along with me. So you're not gonna see the overhead. Let's see how much you remember. And I'm gonna count us in with one, two, ready, go. Um, it's actually gonna go How did you do? Feel free to go back as many times as you need to, to test out and practice that one section. Play as slowly as you need to. I always tell my students when they put things hands together at first, I don't care how slow you play it. If a sloth is going to pass you, that's okay. It's more important that you keep steady and move forward, that you've got your notes in rhythm, rhythm in particular, Audiences' ears or people's ears, they can forgive a wrong note much easier than they can rhythm. It's actually really interesting. And so start as slow as you need to and then build up the speed. As promised, here's a few musical tips to help you out. Singing or humming the melody while you play does make it easier. Students will often, or piano players will realize that songs that are familiar to them are much easier to learn than ones that are completely unfamiliar. This helps internalize the rhythm and melody, making it much easier to coordinate both hands. So definitely try this out as you're playing. Just hum that melody as you play. Playing hands together can feel a bit like your brain is being pulled in separate directions, almost like reading two separate stories at the same time. Just take it slow and build up each section to hands together. You start hands separate, then you do some hands together rhythm away from your piano. Next, do some hands together playing at the piano, 
Make sure you use a metronome or backing track, though the second one is more interesting, to keep yourself moving forward. You may find that the metronome or backing track, you could even start that when you're doing things hands separate, when you're doing the hands together rhythm and all the way through. So even though it was the last one, it can be used all the way through the process. Um, and the last tip is to sing or hum as you play. This is something I do all the time. In fact, when I'm playing something that's difficult, I will often hum it, and that's what helps me get through the section. And I've been playing piano for decades at this point. You'd think I wouldn't have to, but no, that strategy really does work well. Playing hands together doesn't have to be a struggle. With these tips, you'll find it much easier to coordinate both hands smoothly. Now, if you're a piano teacher that's been watching this, you can purchase the Last Moments Sheet Music to use with your students. The link is in the description. And if you're a beginner looking to improve your piano skills, be sure to sign up for my intro session starting next month. The link is in the description. Now, before you go, I have a question for you. What challenges do you face or did you face as you were playing hands together? Please comment below. Thank you so much for watching and happy playing.